I drive out the demons of hell that have come against you. Oh, come on, just begin to sing to the Lord. Begin to sing. So what we've got to do during this fast, we've got to claim that reward. A revival that hit America. And it was continued through fasting and prayer. say this is the word of God this is God's plan for my life it's a light into my pathway this is a lamp into my feet this is a road map for my tomorrows and I am what it says I am I have what it says I have I can do what it says I can do and I can be what it says I can be in the name of Jesus as you remain standing please turn in your Bibles to the book of Romans chapter 10 if you don't have a Bible, move over to someone who does, and you can look uh, on their Bible with them as we read together. Romans chapter 10, verse 8. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thine heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Would you say that with me? And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Father, anoint your word with great power in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen, Amen and you may be seated. God bless you. Today I want to share with you just for a few moments on how to pray the sinner's prayer. The sinner's prayer is not really recorded in the Bible. There are references to the sinner's prayer when Jesus saw the thief on the cross. The thief said to Jesus, he said, be merciful to me, a sinner, and remember me in paradise. And the Lord spoke to him. He said, today, I'll see you in paradise. I think the reason that the sinner's prayer is not a recorded prayer God didn't want there to be some formula and some rote words you would say that you could say and not really mean it from your heart. But God wanted a person to from his heart, from the heart, that doesn't mean the physical organ that pumps blood, but it means from your inner core, from the very root of who you are, your spirit man, it cries out, and it asks God for forgiveness. The ingredients of the sinner's prayer is simply this. Lord, I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. And you're the only way I can be saved and go to heaven. And so out of your heart, you ask God to forgive you of your sins. And you pledge to the Lord that you want God to be the Lord of your life. And so the sinner's prayer can be prayed different ways as long as it comes from your heart. And it has the ingredients of forgiveness. You want God to forgive you and you want Jesus to be the Lord of your life. It can go and sound like this, Lord, I've sinned against you. And I know you have a plan for my life. You have a better way. Today I ask you to forgive me and to come into my life. And take out of me all those wrong things and put in your love and your life inside of me. Lord, I want to go to heaven. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. I want to serve you forever. Amen. There's a lot of ways you can pray that prayer. But if you mean it in your heart, God will hear it. And if you pray that prayer with me and you don't mean it, even though you prayed it, God won't hear it. And you'll be as lost before, uh, after you prayed that prayer as you were before you prayed the prayer. But the thing that we have to understand, the only way we can get to heaven is through Jesus Christ. 
and through with the confession of our mouth, inviting Jesus into our lives. Can I hear an amen? amen? We had a man in our church. He attended here, and actually his daughter was uh, a really a part of our church. She was in our praise team. He had been a dentist, and God uh, saved him, filled him with the Holy Spirit, and actually called him into the ministry. Uh, the uh, latter part of his life, he did not really stay in the dental, dental work. He, he preached. And he went to India. While he was at in, in India, he met Mother Teresa. They were at a restaurant. And uh, he was talking to her, and he says, You know, it, I bet it's just tremendous. You are with so many dying people, and you get to pray the sinner's prayer with so many of these precious people. And Mother Teresa became very, very quiet. And she says, you know, I've heard of the sinner's prayer, but I really don't know the sinner's prayer. And uh, could you teach me the sinner's prayer? And so he prayed with Mother Teresa the sinner's prayer. She prayed it and she said, oh man, I feel so good. She said, I wonder if you would come over to our convent and you would teach that prayer to all of our nuns. And so there were about 150 nuns that were a part of the convent. And he went over there and he taught them the sinner's prayer. And she said, I want you to pray this prayer. I want you to learn this prayer. And I want us to pray it with everybody that we come in contact with as we minister to them. The sinner's prayer. The sinner's prayer is based upon Romans 3.23. Somebody say, I love this scripture. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Nobody is saved, uh, born saved. We're born lost. You don't teach a little baby how to say no. You have to teach them how to say yes. It just seems something's within them. Their very nature is a nature of Adam. The pre-Adamic nature of Adam is a, a, a nature that will send you to hell. It's a nature that's opposite of God. Some people come out of groups and, and religious streams where they have infant baptism. And so they, they uh, say from the very beginning, you're baptized into the church or you're a part of the church. Let me tell you how that started. It started in Europe when years ago, witches and covens of witches began to kidnap children and they would sacrifice them to demons. And so the church, to counter this, when a baby was born, they would take that baby and they would baptize it into the church. They would sprinkle the water on it. And so that, that baby would now belong to God. And it literally stopped the kidnapping of babies. And I, I think if I had people trying to kidnap my baby, I'd probably take him over there and be the first one in line to, to do whatever I could do to protect them from getting kidnapped. But it didn't save them. It, you can't get saved till you reach a place in your life where you are ready to invite the Lord into your heart. And when a child is a baby, they, they do not have... To, they're not to the age of accountability. And so if a child dies in birth or it dies uh, before it reaches an age of accountability, then they will go to heaven. But they reach this age where you have to make a decision whether you will serve God or not. And the Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And then in John, in Romans 6, 23, it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. In other words, the wages of sin, you, you're not being in relationship with Christ. You're not allowing the Holy Spirit to, to be in your life. doesn't mean that you just die like that and you quit breathing, but it, to be separated from God is death. To be separated from the wisdom and from the love and from the peace and the power of the Holy Spirit to direct you and commune with you, the Bible says it's death. And when you die, you will not go to heaven. You'll go to hell. Being good is not what gets you into heaven. There's a lot of bad people that get into heaven. 
but they ask the Lord into their lives and they confess their sins. The, the sinners on the cross, those thieves on either side of the cross, they, they didn't get on that cross by being good. They were murderers. They were rapists. The fact is one of the thieves that made fun of Jesus the, the other thief said to him, he said, you know, he said, we are guilty of our sins. We're here because of our crimes. This is an innocent man. And so what gets you into heaven is not what you know, but who you know. You know, sometimes that's how you get the job. It's not what you know, it's who you know. Well, that's how you get to heaven. I've heard mama say to their kids, you know, if you're bad, you won't go to heaven. Well, that's not what gets you to heaven or keeps you out of heaven. It's having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Can I hear an amen? amen. Then in John 3, 3, it says, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. In other words, Nicodemus came to Jesus, and this man was a, a religious man. He had studied all the books of the Torah. He had read the Old Testament, but yet he wasn't born again. He was a good person. He helped the poor. He helped feed the hungry. He did as best he could to do what's right, but he wouldn't go to heaven because he wasn't born again. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. And Nicodemus says, well, how? How in the world can you get born a second time? How can you re-enter your mother's womb and be born again? He said, I'm not talking about being born of the flesh but I'm talking about being born of the Spirit. And so you have to invite Jesus into your life. Listen to me, young people. It's not how, how righteous and how holy your mama and daddy is. You can't hitchhike on your mama's righteousness on the prayers of your daddy. It's your prayers. It's what you do. It's what you do with your life. And you have to make a decision. I'm going to follow God. I, I'm going to serve the Lord. I, I'm going to be the person God's called me to be. I'm going to find God's will for my life. And so a person has to be born again. And then in John 14, 6, it says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh to the Father but by me. In other words, there's only one way to heaven. There's only one person who can punch your ticket to get you in the pearly gates. And it's not the Islam movement, it's not the Buddha, it's not Hinduism, it's Jesus Christ. I've been to meetings where people got up and they spoke that all roads lead to the same place. It's really not important uh, what you believe, it's just you believe in something. And they say that in all sincerity, but they're sincerely wrong. There's only one way that you're going to get to heaven, and it is through Jesus. He is the only door. And if you try to go through any other way, the Bible says you're a thief and you're a robber. And you'll have to stand before God hearing my voice and knowing that I've spoken the word of truth to you. Now, when you go to, to school and you go to the universities, you're, you're speaking to people who are their, their religion many times is their education. And if they can't see it, they can't feel it, they can't smell it, then it's not real. And the creation theory is, uh, is ridiculous. And uh, the thing about the Bible is a fairy tale. And they try to reprogram our young people. So we teach our sons and our daughters, you're to be respectful. You're to say, yes, sir, no, ma'am. You're not to, to cause trouble. You get in trouble at school. When you get home, that's just, that's just the beginning of your trouble is at school. When you get home, it's a real trouble. Well, we teach them. But then you send them to a place, to a school many times. There's more demons in those schools than, than people are in those schools. And they're there and they're trying to be respectful and they're trying to honor their teacher. But their t teacher is like going home for somebody and they're feeding you strychnine poisoning. They're poisoning. They're feeding you rat, rat poison, and you're trying to be real nice, and you're just eating that poison. And many times they pollute our minds. 
And so they, they begin to think, well, well, you know, maybe it is all right to be a Muslim and it is all right to be Baha'i faith and it is all right to believe in this cult and that cult and it sends them straight to hell. The only way you can be born again is through Jesus Christ. There is no other way. In Romans 10, we read it. It says, if thou will confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. It's not just thinking a prayer. It's confessing it and boldly proclaiming it with the very words that you speak. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Then in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Somebody say, I love this one. Say, this is another favorite. Come on, say, it's another favorite. It says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Then old things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. In other words, God makes you a new creation. You're not the old pair of jeans that has a rip in it. I'm always a sinner. I'll always be a sinner. And, well, let me tell you, you were a sinner, but when you get born again, you're a new creation in Christ Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. And as a new creation, you literally can do anything you want to do. I tell people, if you want to drink, go drink. If you want to fornicate, go fornicate. But you know what happens? You don't want to do those things. He, the Lord changes your want to. He takes the want to to sin and puts the want to to serve God. And then if you do sin, you, 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 your conscience hurts you. And, and you feel, you feel there's, a, there's a guilt, and it's a Holy Ghost guilt. And then you ask God to forgive you. If you'll confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. <clears throat> now, God, God wants every one of us to know about the sinner's prayer. Because number one, that's the only way you're going to get to heaven. That's the only way you're going to make it. If you confess your sins and it has to come out of your heart. If you're here today and I know you are. And you're not right with God. You'll split hell wide open. You leave here and get in a car accident. You'll go to hell. If you don't get that sin out of your life. Once saved, always saved. How many's ever heard that? I don't even know anybody really believes that. <laughs> Not really. I believe that, that when you get saved, God really saves you. And I, I, I think it's hard to backslide. I, I think God deals with you. I don't think you get saved the morning, this morning and you get mad and, and say a bad word. And so you backslide at nine o'clock on your way to work. And then... You, you repent, and so you back on board at, by, by 1030, and then you get mad, and you fall off the wagon at noon. And I don't believe that's the way it works. I believe God deals with you and deals with you and deals with you, but I believe you can turn your back on, on God just like you've turned, some of you turn your back on your family. You turn your back on your wife. You turn your back on your covenant. You can turn your back on God. And it's very dangerous when a person backslides or when a person turns away from the Lord. In the book of Mark, chapter 16, verse 17, it says, These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they'll cast out devils. They'll speak with new tongues. They'll take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it will not harm them. These signs shall follow the preacher. Is that what it says? No. These signs shall follow them that, them that who? How many are a believer here? It can be a young believer. It can be an old believer, but you've got to be a believer. I tell you, I, I've seen more people get healed from children praying for them. Sometimes they're in kindergarten. Send your kids to a Christian kindergarten where they, they, they learn faith. They learn the word of God. To teach him how to pray, to pray for the sick, to bind the devil in Jesus' name. But these signs, miracles, are what brings many people to the Lord. A person doesn't have to be saved to get healed. A person doesn't have to be uh, the devil's broken off of them to become a Christian. Many times, these are what lead people to the Lord. The goodness of God brings people to repentance. I was with a man yesterday for 30 years. 
He was the, and still is, uh, the head of Billy Graham's, um, uh, worked with Billy Graham, and he sets up his meetings, all of his meetings. He told me Billy Graham is going to be 95 years of age next year and is going to have one more meeting. It's going to be live on television. He's setting it all up. His name is Tom Phillips. He was a student at Ole Miss. And when God saved him, and uh, he, he, he quit the partying, quit the drinking, quit the cussing. He said, I, the people made fun of me there at the fraternity I was a part of, but I knew God had a call for my life. He said he came up here to Southern Seminary and he uh, took a little church over in Laconia, Indiana. And on Sunday night, he noticed the people weren't coming to his church. He said, where are y'all going? They said, we're going over to Evangel. He said, there, there's things happening over at Evangel. And so they began to come. It was during the charismatic movement and they began to come over here. So he decided to come over here too and and God filled him with the Holy Spirit. And he, he, was, he said, man, I began to speak in tongues. And, I, and here I'm at the Southern Seminary and I'm wondering what's happened to me. Nobody's ever taught, uh, taught uh, me about all this. And so he said, your dad had people, you were, he was praying for people to be healed. And uh, he said that uh, people would testify that they got healed of a headache. And he'd think to himself, yeah, sure, a headache. Anybody can, you know, I can get healed of a headache taking an aspirin. And somebody got healed of a backache. Yeah, I could take a, two aspirins and get healed of a backache. But he said one man came and he was in his 20s, mid-20s, and he had a withered arm. He said, and they prayed for him and that arm just grew out. And when it did, he said, my people in my church, they stood and applauded. Everybody in the church applauded. He said, I, I began to cry. And I, I thought, I wonder if it was real. I wonder if, you know, what the deal was. So he went after church and he, he found this man. He was holding a baby. They had a, a little baby. And he says, hey, I want to ask you about your arm. He said, uh, the guy said, look, see me holding this baby? It's the first time I've ever been able to hold my baby with this arm. God healed me. God totally healed me in the name of the Lord. I remember we, we had the deacons and the deacons uh, came across and there was a retired pastor. He had pastored for many years and out, in, um, out where Taylorsville Lake is. The fact is the, the, the dam when they built that and flooded that it covered Ashes Creek where his church was. And he was retired, Brother Condor, and he came and he would visit the hospitals and he loved to go in the hospitals and pray. And that Sunday morning, people came down to be prayed for. And uh, this little boy came down and he had had polio and he had, he had the, the, the crutches that you hold here and they had the support under the arm and he's, he had braces on his legs and he came down here. And uh, Brother Condor prayed for him. And then he, he turned him and he set him up here on the, on the, on the platform and he began to undo his braces. And he took those braces off. And, and you know, people were praying. And, and you, people were watching. And he took those, little, those braces off. And he took those crutches. And the little boy got up. And he started walking kind of gingerly at first. And then he, he began to jump. And he began to run. And you talk about people getting saved that day. They knew that the power and message of Jesus was real. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God has called us to be soul winners. And if you're not winning souls and you're not honoring and talking to people about their soul and about the relationship with God, how many know we commit a sin? There are sins of omission and sins of commission. A sin of commission is if I, if I go out here and I'm unfaithful to my wife, I, I go out here and get drunk, if I go out here and do some sinful deed, that's a sin of, of, uh, of what did I say it was? Commission. But other times God tells you to do something. God tells you to do something and you don't do it. You omit what God has told you to do. 
It's a sin of omission. This young man passed this week. Robert. I love Robert. I really love him. I really admire him. He, he was in the Iraqi war. He's 26 years old. He's really working, trying to get his education, be an engineer. He's almost finished up. And I've been missing him. I've been praying for him. And I, and I thought, man, I need to call him. And then I, need, I need to see him. And then I thought, well, I'll, I'll go see him Wednesday. Wednesday, uh, I'll go over there. and he, he works at a golf course. I'll go over there and play golf. Maybe he'll even let me get on free. And I, I'll go over there and I'll talk to him. And it rained. It rained. And then he died. And I thought to myself, Lord, I, I, I should have called him. When you put him on my heart, I should have called him right then. And sometimes God sends people across your pathway. And God sent them there because he sees that their days are numbered. He sees their days are numbered. You know, when Cain and Abel, when those two brothers, they, they, uh, Cain got jealous of Abel and he killed him. And the Lord came and he said to Cain, he said, where's your brother? He said, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? Say that with me. Am I my... And the Lord says, his blood's crying from the ground. It's crying from the earth. There's life in the blood. When, when innocent blood falls to the ground, it cries out, avenge me of my blood. Avenge me of my blood. These, these 30 million... Well, I hope you enjoyed today's program. And you know, the word that God gave me has been in my spirit for some time. If you'd like a copy of that video, just write me or call the number on your screen and we'll be glad to send that to you for any generous gift. And this will help us in our project in, in building a Christian television station right there in the Holy Land. If you'd like to have the New Testament on video, that's right, we'll send it to you. My favorite book is the book of Revelation. It's, it's awesome. Uh, for a gift of $126, we'll rush this to you. I want to show you once again the New Testament on video. His birth will make you very happy. Many people will be glad. Your son will be a great servant of the Lord. He must never drink wine or beer. And the power of the Holy Spirit will be with him from the time he is born. John will lead many people in Israel. Well, wasn't that great? Well, listen, I, I hope I can hear from you. Father, I speak your blessings and miracles in the name of Jesus. Amen. A revival that hit America. And it was continued through fasting and prayer.